East to West is a huge song for me. That was kind of letting God talk to me about his forgiveness instead of me just trying to figure it out. Reading God's word and seeing what he says uh, about my sin, uh, that verse that he's casted as far as the East is from the West, man, that, that was a big discovery for me. That It took me seven years to write that song um, because when I started it, it was just me venting in the car. Hey everyone, welcome to the Catholic Link Show. We're your host, Drew and Katie Taylor, and we pray this time will be your link to living the faith like never before. And we are excited. We have just an ordinary youth <laughs> pastor on the show uh, who also happens to be a Grammy Award winning uh, lead singer of Casting Crowns. So Mark Hall, just welcome to the show. Hey Drew, hey Katie, how's it going? It is good. <laughs> it is so good. Um, we want to jump right into it because we got a pre-screening um, of the documentary that they put together for you guys uh, called Home by Sunday, mm -hmm. uh, all about 20 years of casting crowns. And it was it was really cool for me because um, I had really my initial conversion back in about uh, 2004. And in the yeah. documentary, you talk about 2003 was about the time that everyone started to hear about casting crowns. So mm. every song that played in the documentary, I was like, oh, man, it just like just brought me <laughs> back to, to the early 2000s. First um, encounter with the Lord. Yeah. And just like the, the youth mm. group days. And so mm. I just wanted to hear from you, like, what are, th that was one of the things that got me excited about the documentary. What, what are you excited about with the launch of this movie? You know, I, I think I pushed back on them for so long because I, I just told them, guys, I don't have any car chases or shootouts in my story. Nobody has powers. You know, I just don't know what. So I, I always thought, that, why would, why are we doing this? You know, and I think when I'm looking back on it finished, um, I think the overall message is that there's no next level to the church. And uh, Jesus went to a lot of trouble to start the church and we need it. We need each other. And uh, we actually had to work to get there, um, to, to say no to things and make priorities to, to, to be a part of it. And it's not because it was some noble, um, some noble, brave thing. It's just, that's our church. We need our church. We're aware of that. We have very good self-awareness. We know we're a bunch of dorks, right? And we know we need community. And, and uh, you know, online stuff's great. Books are great. Podcasts are great. But it's not church. You know, we got to have people that know us and that pray for us. And that I think that's what's kept our, our head on our shoulders all this time. And I think the other thing I want people to see is that you are not the audience of Christ. You're the body of Christ. So you have ministry. You have gifts. You have talents. You have skills. And that's how you point people to Jesus. So I want people walking away with it thinking, we can do this, you know? You know, we can do ministry. We can point people to Jesus. Uh, I think that that is such a beautiful truth that is conveyed in it. And one of the things that you talked about was crafting song and mm -hmm. how your songs give and invite people in to truth, but also give you a path to tell the gospel. And for all of us, our ministry may not be a record deal or really you don't want to hear me sing, but um, in, a, in a solo circumstance, I will sing along. Um, but the your ability to craft a story, and we'd love to hear advice on sharing the gospel because every one of us is called to that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, what um, what you build your songs out of and how – you recommend us to do that as well. It's like share, just sharing the gospel with people. Yeah. Um, for me, you're, you're there's a pressure we put on ourselves. Um, we kind of decide in our head that we're not good enough Christians and we're not smart enough Christians. So we don't think we're qualified, right? And, uh, you know, because normally the people that you're going to share the gospel with, hopefully, are the people that you know. Um, and not uh, To me, when you love people, uh, you've earned the right to speak the truth. That's how love and truth works. Um, you, people are throwing rocks at people through media trying to share the gospel with them, and it's not hitting. It never hits who you're aiming at, right? But I think when you love someone, uh, they'll hear from you. And to me, sharing the gospel is, first of all, sharing your story. You know, and your story is, this is me before I got saved. 
Uh, this is what happened when I got saved, and this is how it's been since I got saved. It's just those three things. And it's not proving God's goodness by your sinlessness. It, it's saying, man, I was a big train wreck, you know, and, and Jesus rescued me. And what's crazy is I'm still a train wreck. I'm still bumping my life. I'm bumping my head on life every day, right? But it's not about being awesome for God. It's about belonging to an awesome God, right? Because I'm trusting in what Jesus did for me to make me right with God. I'm not working my way to him. I, I, I'm, I'm realizing he came down here to me, right? And I think that's what people need to hear. And we're always scared that they're going to stump us with some crazy question or they're going to hit us with some conspiracy theory. But when people do that to me, I don't really entertain it because people don't really want their questions answered. They want they want their questions to hide behind, right? You'll notice that. Somebody will say, well, you know, the Bible's full of, full of, and you'll say, well, actually, this, 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 this. And they'll go, yeah, but I just I just feel, you know, so, so I don't think the debating thing is gonna work, but I think when you speak the truth in love, and you talk about surrendering to Jesus as your king. Um, if they ask me a hard question after that, I'll be, I'll be like, man, I don't know. That's a good one. I'll check on them. The big thing is this. When you go home tonight and you're staring up at your ceiling fan, you know he's there. When it's just you, you know it. That's, that's what I'm talking about, you know? And uh, I, th I think you just got to get real. Mm -hmm. I I relate to your like this is my life before Jesus and then this is my life after mm -hmm. and I I also relate to your testimony. I was diagnosed as a dyslexic. I definitely had the teachers tell me like you will never amount yeah. to anything and that you are not enough. And mm -hmm. as you have spoken on that experience, I think it's the reality that the diagnosis doesn't change. But yeah. how I look at myself and how I look at God as a creator that doesn't make mistakes yeah. is the shift that changes everything. And I think that, yeah, I don't know if you want to, if you can speak on that or um, your own journey of coming to peace uh, yeah. with how God made you. You know, when, when I got, I think I was about third grade, maybe third or fourth grade when I got tested and, uh, and, and the teachers, uh, the school is trying their best. You know, they're, they're, they're doing, and even now they're doing so much more, like tons more to help kids that, that learn different. Uh, we're not learning disabled. We have learning differences. We don't, we don't learn with a herd, right? And that, that poor teacher is trained and they're doing their best, but they got to go with the goers. They got 30 kids in there and one that, that learns different. They don't, they, they can't, that's not, school's not built for, for people like, like me um, until recently when they started doing that better. But uh, I, I think those labels just stuck to me and always having to go to the special class, you know, and hiding my school schedule from my friends. Like, when I started sharing my story about being dyslexic, I would run into friends that I went to school with, and they said, Mark, is that real? Because I don't ever remember you. I said, you're right, you don't. Because I, I was the king of changing the subject. Because they were like, I always wonder why I never had classes with you. You know how hard it is <laughs> to hide your school schedule from your friends at school? I mean, you got to be the king of changing the subject, you know? Hey, what class are you going to? Oh, I see a friend of mine. Boop, I'm running down the hall, you know? And that, so I was just hiding all the time, you know? And I was probably 21 before I heard anybody say the word uh, or, or anybody say that they were dyslexic because nobody talked about that back then. And I was a brand new young youth pastor and I had about, had my whole youth group, all 10 of us, we we're all in the van, we went to this youth conference, tons of students. Stephen Curtis Chapman did a concert and uh, Dave Edwards was the speaker. And uh, Dave is giving his sermon and we're there with thousands of kids. I've never seen that many kids. And he starts talking about being dyslexic. And I'm like, what is he doing? So he can't do that. Nobody's <laughs> going to listen to him now because everybody's going to know he's he's not as smart as everybody because that's what was in my head, right? I, I had that stay in the back, hide, don't let him see you sweat kind of thing. And I just thought, why is he talking about this? And I, I kept listening and he's kept talking about how God uses people, you know, they don't have it all together. And then Stephen Curtis Chapman gets up and does a concert and he sings uh, a song, uh, His Strength is Perfect. 
His strength is perfect when our strength is gone. Have you heard that song? Old, old song. Look it up. You all have homework. And the whole thing just pointed me to Scripture. And finding uh, 2 Corinthians 12, where Paul is praying that God will take his thorn away. I don't know what it was, but he's praying over and over and over that he'll take it away. And I remember reading that thinking, dude, this is it. I'm about to read that abracadabra verse that just takes all your problems away, you know, because that's what a TV preacher say. You just love Jesus, all your problems go away. I don't know who that TV preacher is, but I like to pop him in the head sometimes because it's not in the Bible. I tell my kids this all the time. It's like, I'm at the church now, but when I'm teaching, I'll tell them, have you ever read the New Testament, guys? None of those guys made it out alive, y'all. None of them made it out alive. It was really tough, you know? So I don't know. Maybe it's just living in America. We think our problems are supposed to disappear. But he said in that scripture, he said, no, Paul, I'm not. I'm going to let this situation stay, and I'm going to use it. He said, "He said, uh, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in your weakness. And that was the first time I started realizing I got to start telling my story. And it was the scariest thing ever, you know, because teenagers are pit bulls. You don't know what they're going to do, you know. I thought, I thought so at the time. I was scared to death of them. And uh, I remember teaching, and I read that verse, and I said, when I was a kid, I was in the, the LD classes, and the their heads just went, woof, just looking up like they'd never heard anybody talk real before. And that was the day that I realized that um, Paul was right. He said, you boast in your weakness. You're going to brag on something. Brag on, brag on your scars because it shows how big his forgiveness is. You know, talk about your weaknesses because it shows where his strength is. So people walk away from your story like I hope they walk away from this movie. Um, Mark Miller, my producer, said, you guys, this is when we first got signed. He said, you guys look kind of like seven people just kind of walked up out of church and just up onto the stage and started playing. And I said, oh, no. <laughs> so All right. <laughs> I, I think we're proof that God, God uses less than ordinary people. Mm. Yeah, I, and I think... In a world today with with social media, with Instagram, right? We just see these, you know, we compare our bloopers to everyone else's highlight reel, mm. uh, and and to and it's so refreshing and authentic to hear the story of no, I I don't have it all together. I'm yeah. not perfect. We struggle every single day, um, and I, I think that the world just needs to hear more of that. And we put people mm. up on these pedestals and think I'm I'm never gonna I'm never gonna amount to them. I'm never gonna be like them. Uh, when in reality, well, in reality, the Lord doesn't want us to be like them. They want, he wants us to be more fully alive in ourselves and, and yeah. his power to make us perfect in our weakness. So thank you for just, just being vulnerable and, and um, throughout the documentary and just sharing that. And it really is um, inspiring. Uh, speaking of which, so I know that you minister to a lot of um, young adults. I think a, a lot of our listeners are either in like the young adult phase or the young parent phase. So I'm going to ask yeah. you two different questions okay. um, and they'll be uh, your biggest advice for uh, maybe or like your, what would you tell yourself um, in your young adult phase? And then mm -hmm. what would be your biggest advice to yourself in your like young parent age? Okay. Um, it, when I was a young adult, I was just figuring out my whole walk with Jesus thing. And I think up until you, know, you get out of high school, you start realizing, I think I had faith in my pastor's faith. I think I, I think that's my problem. I, I had faith in my my Sunday school teacher's faith and my youth pastor's faith, but they didn't they didn't go home with me, you know. And I started realizing, the older I got, um, I really need to be in the Word more, but I didn't because I don't know something about it. You, you feel like the discovery of something you need to do. It's so it's a it's an epiphany, and we'll just walk around a month like that. I just know that I'm supposed to do it. Are you doing it yet? No, no, not yet. <laughs> but I'm still posting. You know, I'm I'm posting about it, and I I've bought all the. I got a journal. I got a brand new journal. I I need to do some more research. <laughs> it's kind of like me when I'm working out. It's like I don't work out, but I've got the weights. 
I've got the the clothes. I've got the clothes that that apparently you can sweat in. I don't know. I've never sweat in them, but I, I'm outfitted. I'm totally outfitted. And, and and believe me, I'm not talking down to young people. I, I'm talking up to you because if there's a way to mess this whole being safe thing up, dude, I've cracked the code. All right. But when I look back, I see these trends. I see me when I'm living on my feelings and me when I'm le- leaning uh, or living on God's word. And going back to being dyslexic, I don't read for fun, you know? So I would just kind of stay away from his word and I, I would get tanked up by other people's faith and stories and songs and worship moments. And it was just like, yeah, you know? But it's it's just different. When, when I would finally sit down and open God's word and start reading, there would be a moment in there. There'd be a lot of moments where I'm like, I don't really know what that that means, or or that's a really cool verse. I'm not sure what that's for, but but I'm reading it and it, it's going into me, and it would always come out later, right? Every time I read God's word, it wasn't a mountain moving moment. It was just, okay, God, I'm here. Talk to me, you know. And but there were a few moments, like the the First Corinthians 12 thing that that happened when I was with God on my own just me and him and his word, there's got to be those moments for you, you know? Um, we've got to get in the word for ourselves. So I, I challenge you to do that. Um, and you can feel officially challenged. Is it? I'm a fresh <laughs> in this challenge. But um, same as me, you know, the, the first thing the enemy's coming after in my life is my time with Jesus. He can't have me anymore, but he can get me distracted and get me busy. And uh, that, that's a big one for young people. Yeah. And I think, man, I, I, and I just want to affirm if you're, if you're a young adult listening to this, like the culture that you live in right now is actively trying to distract you and get you to not pray. And so you are in a battle, you are in a war, um, for your salvation and man, is it difficult, but we as a society love just the quick hit, the fix the I want it right now overnight delivery of my salvation to my door. <laughs> my perfection and holiness. Go. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I think, I think it's just, again, it's just so refreshing to hear that God is a God of process mm-hmm. and th- yeah. these things take time, but, but you've got to, you got to get out of bed and, you know, put your shoes on and start walking because it's gonna, it's gonna take time, but man, is it so worth it? Um, yeah. yeah, it's so good to hear. It's a sudden discovery when you realize Everybody's been fighting for me up to this point, like making me go, making me get up, making me work. And now it's me, you know, and uh, sometimes it, it feels like it's too much. I can't do that. But uh, God knew what he was getting into when he saved you. So we, we've just got to declare war on our day, even if it means setting my Bible on the pillow, saying I'm not laying down my head until I read a little bit more of the book of John, you know, uh, we got to start somewhere. Mm-hmm. And that is a great book to start with. Um, <laughs> but I, I think that's even, yeah, yes. Uh, the Those habits then transition into those young parents that we asked about and the reality that once you've started that relationship with Christ, because there kids are going to bring in a whole new level of distraction Uh and Mm -hmm. reveal to you your greatest weaknesses. Yeah. So what, what advice would you have to young parents? You know, I I think accidentally some of the best advice I've ever given parents has just been, yeah, that's normal. What else? Yeah, that's normal. He's doing what? Yeah, that's just normal. You know, (laughs) I think parents want to hear that more than anything else is, Yes, your kids are normal. They pour things out and pitch fits. They're a bunch of little sinners. We got to remember that, you know. They're they're they look great in pictures, but yeah, man, nobody teaches them how to lie. Nobody nobody teaches them how to go. I didn't do that. That's you know we got to remember that. So they're they're not they're not perfect. And I think with the first moment you realize, uh, you know, when you first have a kid, I think. The struggle is more for the dad because it's the old baby is just kind of sitting there. He's just like, you know. So I had to encourage my son through that because when Lincoln was born, I was like, "How you doing, man?" He's like, "I'm doing good. I'm doing good." I said, "He's just staring at you." And he goes, "Yeah, 
I said, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. Don't you worry. He's going to start doing little things, you know, and in in probably a month or so, every day is going to be like Christmas because just new stuff starts happening. They start smiling and doing things. So that started happening. And now they're in the, the, the place where with my one year old grandson, where he's not liking all their ideas. You know, he's not feeling it. <laughs> so, <laughs> but as kids grow up, I think the first thing is just to remember that they go through little phases. They 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 just do little things. You know, e- even with like like anxiety and and, and acting out uh, feelings that are on the inside that they don't know how to get out. Those can flesh out in some some strange ways sometimes. You know, the, the way they handle things, the way they do things. Um, I. I I've been in the same church for 20 years and, well, 25 years. And um, one thing that I see here is that everybody's turning out okay. I mean, the, the kid, everybody's fine, you know? Some of them went through stuff and they got some counseling for it. They went through different things and, and they, they got good counsel from other believers. Uh, but all these things that at the time seemed like this is never going to go away. Um, it, it passed, you know. And I know that that's that might sound simple, but I really hope you hear it because you know that little quiet kid in the back that didn't talk and didn't know how to use his words even in the seventh and eighth grade. He's a great dad. He's a great dad now. You know, and the girl that that got picked on and and, and you know she was overweight or he was underweight or she was tall and he was short and all those things are fine. You know, God uses all of those things to make us stronger. Um, and, and that's a big deal. And, and I guess the third thing I'll say is um, that story time at night, reading the books at night, uh, no matter how tired you are, uh, that that bedtime is, is special. And uh, uh, spending time with them is, is a big deal. And uh, even... Reading some Bible stories, there's so many good kids Bible stories books out there um, that that will even catch your heart at times as you read it, you know. But just every time you plant God's word in your child, it won't come to harvest for a while. You're not going to see that come out for a while, maybe a long while. But God's word is living and active, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Uh, what does he say? Just as the rain falls from the heavens, it doesn't return to the heavens unless it's fed until it's fed the earth. Um, he says, so is my word that comes from my mouth. Uh, it, it always accomplishes what I set forth for it to accomplish. It never returns to me void, right? So when I'm sharing God's word with my child, what I'm doing is I'm planting. And, and what, I, what I feel like as a young dad, I was sharing them a verse so they would be better today. <laughs> I just, we just talked about this. It was the first that said to control your tongue and you didn't, you know, it, it's, a lot of that stuff you're, you're planting and you're not going to see the fruit for a while. But every time you pray with your kid and every time uh, you say verses to them until they're bored of hearing them and they're like, no, 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 that's called memorization, Right. And all those na 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 are going to come out of them later in life. So just remember, we're kind of farmers, and uh, you got to be patient. I think I could hear those words every single day and yes. like, remind myself mm-hmm. of those because, man, is it so hard, but it's so worth it. Um, all right. I've got a tough, real tough question for you. Yeah. You're going to have to choose. What is the favorite song that you've ever written. You have to choose one. I choose one. You know, I didn't know this about myself till I started doing interviews. I don't have favorites of things. Like, what's your favorite movie? Here's six. <laughs> you know, what, what's your favorite song? Here's 11. You know, I don't know what it is. I'm, in, I'm indecisive. It's probably that ADD dyslexic thing. I don't know. Who knows? I'll blame it on that. That's what we can do. Right? But um, some of my favorites have been... The songs that probably wouldn't ever be on the radio, but as far as songs on the radio, like East to West is a huge song for me. That was kind of letting God talk to me about his forgiveness instead of me just trying to figure it out, you know, because when you're trying to figure God out, 
You're just going to turn him into you. That's why you think he's mad. Because you're mad at people, right? <laughs> you're thinking he's keeping records because you keep records, right? So, so I, I'm going to turn God into me if I'm not careful. So reading God's word and seeing what he says uh, about my sin, uh, that verse that he's casted as far as the east is from the west, man, that, that was a big discovery for me. That It took me seven years to write that song. Um, because when I started it, it was just me venting in the car. It was, you know, I feel like my old life is just always here. I'm so much more experienced in my old life. That's why they call this the new life, I guess. So I just feel like it's always here, you know? And and letting God have that, it would it was me singing, how far is the east from the west? Like, how far does that go? How I know how people down here work, and people will love you for a while. They'll love you until, you know, but um, I just couldn't grasp it. And as a, matter, as a matter of fact, it really was a song I didn't finish. It just stuck in my head uh, until seven years later. You know, I, I've got so much, I've got more uh, of God's Word in me. And I was sitting down with a friend of mine, Bernie Herms, and we were, we were writing, and I told him about this song. I said, oh, there's this song. And I showed him the chords, and he plays beautifully. So he starts playing it, and I'm saying, how far is the East from the West? I can't stand this old self coming back again, you know? And it just came out of me at the piano. You know how far the East is from the West. It's from one scarred hand to the other. And I said it, I sang it. And Bernie said, what? What? And so he's like, that's beautiful, you know, and and uh, so that's that's how that song came to be because it was really a before walking with Jesus and after walking with Jesus in the same song. So uh, that that's the one that people would know. That's a favorite. Ah, oh, okay. Give us a couple that are not as well known yeah. that we can go home and uh, and look up and listen to. Yeah. There's there's a family song. A song about a broken family called uh, House of Our Dreams and House of Their Dreams, yeah. And it's a story. Anytime I tell you a story, it's a story because I've been in the same church for a long time. Um, things that I've seen, things that I'm walking through myself. But that's a story of a family that slowly breaks apart and they didn't notice it until it was too late and how God brought it back together. Um, there's a song called A City on the Hill. That's a special one for me, and it deals with how we tend to find people that believe just like we do, and their personalities are like we do, and we run off, and we left the church and started our own things. And uh, uh, it's two old men talking about the city on the hill because it's not there anymore. And that's what the story is and, uh, and what happened. Uh, that's a big one. And uh, the one from this record that— uh, the last record, uh, there's a song called Awaken Me. There's about the prodigal son. Uh, the only Jesus song record has four songs about the prodigal son story, uh, about each one, so each member of the family. But uh, on this record, my favorite is, um, oh, what's it called? Song of a Broken Heart is what it's called. And um, just going through a lot of hard things when I was a kid, and uh, there's things you write stories about, and there's things you don't you don't sing songs about. And uh, just walking through that and trying to sift through, you know, where God was in that and how, how why things happened and that, that sort of stuff, it's, it can be so tough. And uh, what I've seen in my life is that when you've hurt and when you've got let God heal that hurt, you start seeing that hurt in other people. You see people and you're like, I know what you're going through. I can see that. And um, and that that song is a sweet conversation uh, between two people where they're saying, I see your pain because I've been there. And, and, and Jesus can love you through that because he loved me through that. And uh, to me, it's, it's a song the world may never hear because we don't buy albums anymore for some reason. Um, I don't buy scenes from movies, but we do buy songs from albums. I don't know. <laughs> but... Um, but the record comes together in a story. They all do when I'm right. 
I'll refer back to songs in my songs, and they all just kind of fit in uh, Song of a Broken Heart. It's probably the most important song on our newest record. Uh, so good. Mark, I feel like we could talk to you all day. Um, thank you so much for spending your time with us. Where can um, our listeners go to learn more about the documentary and what you guys have going on at Casting Crowns? Okay, so the documentary, the story, um, it comes out in theaters on November 30th, just one night in theaters. Um, so you can go to castingcrowns.com and find that, and they'll show you where to find it. But then it'll start going to streaming like shortly after. Um, I'm never good with the details, but I do know November the 30th. So, but if you go to castingcrowns.com, I'm sure all the info's on it. And uh, and I hope I hope the movie encourages because what you're going to see in the movie is um, I said no to it for a long time until I told him I said if you can make it about the songs, where the songs came from, and then stories of people that have heard the songs. Uh, there's about three or four stories in there uh, about the lady that that praise you in the storm was written about her daughter passing away, and her telling the story in there. There's some really, really strong moments. Um, my drummer, Jack, uh, grew up in my youth group and uh, struggled hard with addiction. And uh, we went off to a, to a, a place called Kessiewig um, Center. It was up, up in New Jersey in Trenton. And uh, God had to work on him for a while. And uh, he's my drummer now. But he tells his story of addiction and, and God bringing him through that, still bringing him through that, because that's something that hangs on to you. So it's not just a bunch of guys talking about, we were in the studio, we made this cool thing. No, it, it's, it's not as much that, it's, it's, it's real life, so. Yes. Oh, amen. Uh, well, to our listeners, I, we highly recommend you guys check this movie out. Go support it in theaters, and then if you miss that, then we'll leave links in the description of where you can find it. Um, and we just pray that uh, that movie and this talk just inspire you. If if you if you got something out of this, please share it with a friend um, or leave us a comment below. We'd love to hear from you guys and what's going on in your hearts. Um, and so we are praying for you guys until next time. God bless. And Mark, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Did you see that just happen? No. I just, picked up, I just picked up this... Purell, and I squeezed it, and it exploded all over my shirt and all the table. Like, it's like alcohol everywhere. So, there we go. Good, great. Okay. Let's, let's return. As my shirt slowly fades into tie-dye, let's just finish. <laughs> All right, here we go.